Hey YouTube, this is a free extract from my larger Illustrator course called Illustrator Essentials. You can check it out on bringyourownlaptop.com. Um, if you wanna follow along with this video, there's exercise files, okay? Those are free to download. You can go and download those and there'll be a link in the description, okay, so you can play along. Uh, one last thing is there's a cheat sheet as well. So there is a PDF you can download from bringyourownlaptop.com. Um, look for resources, okay? It's a free PDF, you can download it, print it up, stick it next to your computer, while you're doing these videos. All right, enjoy the video. Bye now. Hi there, in this video, we're gonna redraw the Kodak logo, the new one, it looks old. Okay, we're gonna draw it, we're gonna use the shape builder tool, we're gonna use the corner options, eyedropper tool. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy. Let's go and do it now in Adobe Illustrator. All right, to get started, let's go to file, let's go to open, and in your exercise files, there's a folder called logo exercise, open up three, Kodak. Okay, Kodak went through a rebrand last year. Okay, and they've gone back to kind of like an old school style. And we're gonna redraw that one. Now just know that in your layers panel here, I've got a layer called background that I've locked. And that's what we're gonna redraw over. Just make sure you're on the redraw layer. Go back to properties. We're gonna start with a rectangle. If you can't find it, it might be set as an ellipse. Just hold those, uh, any of those tools down and hold, hold, hold with the mouse. And grab the rectangle tool. Now I'm gonna pick a fill color of nothing and a stroke of one point, okay, and black. And I'm just gonna start dragging down over here, just roughly in the corner. And if you hold shift, you get a perfect circle. It's not what we want from this logo, okay. So I'm just letting go, I've got nothing held down, getting it close. Now if we wanna resize it, in case we didn't get it quite right, grab the black arrow, zoom in a little bit. Zooming is command plus, okay. And you can grab any of these sides here and just kind of readjust them to get them close. All right, next thing we wanna do is probably the corners around the outside. I'm gonna grab one of them, black arrow. I have it selected by clicking the edge and these dots appear, these corner options. Watch this, just drag them into the center here until you get something that you feel is right. Nice. Next thing we're gonna do is this like little slice out of here. We're gonna use, eh, there's lots of ways we could do it. I'm gonna use the pen tool and I'm gonna start kind of randomly out here. We're gonna adjust these uh, key, these sorry, anchor points a little bit later on. I'm gonna click once, kind of down here, try and line it up. I'm gonna overlap them, just it's gonna make it easier later on. Okay, I'm getting it close, close. And when you come back to the beginning here, if you line them up, you'll see you get this like little circle that appears that says I'm gonna complete this path. That's what we need. Next thing I'd like to do is grab my white arrow and just make sure under view, you've got your smart guides with a little tick next to it. If there's no tick, tick it on. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit. Okay, because what I'd like to do is, I've clicked off in the background, I wanna click on one point here, and I wanna, I'm gonna move it out of the way so I can see, and then drag it back in. What I'm looking to do is two things. I want it to intersect with this line. Okay, you can kind of see where it snaps to it, and I like to get it pretty close to where it should be. Cool, same with this one. Okay, I've clicked it once, it goes red, and then I'm gonna move it out of the way, let go of it, move it back, and I want it to snap to the line, and just to get it to be close to where I need it to be. Now that went off the line, okay, and that's gonna cause problems later on. I'm hitting Command Shift Y, nope, just Command Y, um, or Control Y on a PC, and that gives it, makes it a little clearer. You look at it in wireframe, it's so Command Y again, and I wanna make sure that it's all kind of snapped onto the anchor point. Snack off, and just make sure, it kind of says it, see it says intersect, okay, small little letters, and then Command Y again, or Control Y, you can kind of double check for yourself. All right, same with this one. I'm gonna make sure you, my friend, are intersect with a line, and you are intersect with a line. But, now, I'm gonna get it pretty close, right? Um, come back here. Cool, so now I've got them kind of roughly in the position. Let's make sure they're identical at the top of the bottom. So I click off in the background, I've got my direct selection tool, the white arrow, click this one once, goes red, hold shift, grab the second one, now they're both selected. To make sure they're perfectly aligned, there's an option over here that says align, and just make sure they're bang on. Same with you two, yep, and yep. So both of those two are red, hit align, and that should work. All right, these two guys need a little bit of tidying up, so I'm gonna click one of them. If I click one of them before I zoom in, Command plus on a Mac or Control plus on a PC, it kind of zooms into the right part. So I wanna first of all make sure that they are pretty close. So I've clicked on one, and that looks pretty close to me. So does that one looks okay-ish. So I wanna make sure that they're perfectly aligned. So the same trick as before, I'm gonna select one, hold shift, grab the other one, and use this vertical align center. How are we looking? Zoom out, Command Y, just make sure nothing's kind of been destroyed. 
it's all looking pretty good. All right, now we want to slice these bits out. So we grab our black arrow, select everything, and we're going to use our handy dandy uh, shape builder tool. Love this thing. Because what it's going to do is um, if I hold down the option key on a Mac on the, or an alt key on a PC, look what happens to the cursor. Can you see it changes to a minus? That's what I want. I want to drag across there and then across there, and it slices a nice big hole out of it. Okay. All right, so we're pretty close. Let's grab the white arrow again, click in this one. And we'll do both of these at the same time because they want to be symmetrical. So I shift click both of them. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to zoom in to be able to see how far to go in. You're looking for that little kind of target that's just inside. And I'm going to zoom them out. That looks good to me. All right, uh, this guy. Hold. Now moving around, I'm holding spacebar, clicking and dragging with my mouse. Okay, so I've got these both selected. I don't. <laughs> Hold shift, make sure you got them both selected. Zoom in on one of them. Shift to move up. Here you go. And I'm going to just drag this one down. And drag it down. Yeah, I feel like we got there close. All right, let's fill it with the color. I'm zooming in instead of out. Grab the black arrow. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select the red. And I would like to pick no fill, which is a stroke. So you might have to turn that off. Mine's already off. Back to the black arrow, click in the background. Now we're nearly there, right? Let's do the big colored box in the background. Whoa, moving around, spacebar. I should have drawn it better, but it's okay. Let's grab the eyedropper tool, pick the color from that. And it's at the front, so I wanna to go to Arrange, send it back, make sure it's selected first. Now there's one thing we haven't done, we've kind of ignored this text in here. So let's look at doing that. Like, I guess, Finding out with the font, it'd be easy just to Google it and figure out what font they used. Sometimes bigger brands actually create or um, yeah, make their own fonts or they might just kind of like take ownership of a font and, and change it around to suit their needs. They're probably playing on a font they had way back when. I'm guessing this, I haven't actually checked. But what you can do is uh, a nice little trick. Well, not a trick. Um, this font here, if I do a screenshot of it, Okay, I'm gonna use something like Typekit to figure out what the font is, but there's gonna be a couple of quirks, and mainly because it's stacked on top of each other instead of traditionally kind of left to right. So uh, I'm using a screenshot, Command Shift 4 on a Mac. On a PC, I think it's print screen. Okay, and then you it ends up somewhere. You'll have to double check for a PC. So I've taken a screenshot and I'm gonna open up that screenshot. I, I can't just dump it straight into Typekit now to guess the font because it's stacked the way it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is in Photoshop, I'm going to add that screenshot and fix it up a little bit. Where is Photoshop? Here we go. All right, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my crop tool. Okay, it's like Photoshop 101. I'm gonna drag it out so I've got enough room. Hit return. Okay, I would like to grab my rectangle marquee tool and I wanna grab this guy. Copy him, paste him, drag him off. Back to my rectangle marquee tool. Copy and paste them. Got to make sure I go back to this layer zero. Copy, paste, move them around. So I'm moving in with the move tool. I'm actually using shortcuts. Maybe a bit too fast with the shortcuts. Let's go the long way. So I've got my rectangle marquee tool. Got to make sure I'm on layer zero. Copy and paste. Back to the move tool. Okay, that's the long version. I'm going to go the shortcut version. M for the marquee. Click on this layer. Copy, paste. Okay, so I've got the basics, right? I'm gonna turn my rulers on, it's Command R, okay, or Control R on a PC, and I'm gonna zoom in. Same same shortcut as Illustrator, Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC. I'm gonna line that up, and I'm gonna try and, so layer one, there you are. I'm gonna try and get them lined up like it would be side by side. I should probably just Google, there's probably a version of it that's that way. I'm showing you what would happen potentially if I, I'm just trying to, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Let's go you. I'm using my arrow keys just to tap it around when it gets close to being in the right spot. Okay, so that's cool. All right, uh, next thing I wanna do is I am going to crop it with my crop tool and drag the corner up. Here you go. And that will do. And what I might do is fill in the background as well. I'm not sure if that hole would cause it problems. So I'm gonna make a new layer, drag it to the bottom. I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool, which is there. I'm gonna click on it. And with that new layer selected, I'm gonna to go to edit, and I'm gonna to go to fill. I'm gonna say use foreground color. Nice. 
All right, now I'm gonna save this as a JPEG. So file, save as, I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. I'm gonna stick it on my desktop. Don't really mind what it's called. Now I'm gonna see if I can get it to work in Typekit. I should have checked this first, all right? Um, <laughs> it's a lot of work. I guess it's giving you some techniques. So there's my screenshot. I'm gonna drag it into this little box here. So I'm at typekit.com. Um, it's Adobe's kind of font management system. There's lots of free fonts on here. I'm filling while it's doing its work. And hopefully some magic is gonna happen. It's gonna tell us what font it is. Pick a single line of text. If you've uploaded something with a couple, you might have to just pick one. Then it's try to guess the characters and it's done a pretty bad job. So I'm typing them in kind of to tell it what it is. This is not looking good. Ooh. Mm. Okay, so I told it what it is and it's gone off and tried to find them. And oh, we're close. The biggest giveaway is you're looking for, like the O is reasonably distinctive, it's the K. Can you see here there's no like, see this one here has like a big bridge before the K starts. This one kind of goes in, they're symmetrical top and bottom. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a symmetrical K. Ooh, nope, it's kind of like this. Mini serifs, the A is quite different. So I think we might not be able to do this one. Either doesn't, it's not a, like it's being customized font or I just haven't done it right. Okay, and what I should do now is probably just go out and pick a Google. What font did Kodak use in its 2017 rebrand? And I'd use that. All right, that is, let's go back into Illustrator, see our handiwork. Um, well, our partial handiwork, where is he? There he goes there. Awesome, now there are 10 million ways of doing that, okay? That was the way that I thought was the most efficient, but you might find another way. Um, yeah, happy illustrating. Check out the other logo redraws. Um, yeah, and I will see you in the next video. Hi, uh, what did you think of the video? If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Also leave me a comment, uh, let me know what you liked about it. Um, also, this is kind of a short part of a longer course, okay? If you wanna check that out, it's at bringyourownlaptop.com. This is the essentials course, okay? There is also another course, there is an advanced course, okay, for Illustrator, and also a UI web uh, app design uh, version of Illustrator course as well. Check all those out. Um, also, it's quite a visual course. I'd love to see what you've actually made. Uh, on Instagram, I'm bringyourownlaptop, okay? Check that out. Also, remember, there's a cheat sheet you can download bring your own laptop. It's free under resources. Check all that out. And yeah, I'll see you in another video. Bye now.